Welcome to the Jungets Games tutorial and playthrough for Bosk. In this video, I'll be teaching you how to play the game while we're actually playing it, and if you'd like to watch the rest of the playthrough, you can do so by clicking the link down below in the description, or by clicking the I up there in the top corner. Now before we move on, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles, because I might make mistakes while we're playing, and that lets me put corrections directly on the screen. Now I'd also like to mention that the reason this video is being made is because it was specifically requested and then won a poll by the contributing producer level supporters of this channel. Now you can learn more about that by going to patreon.com slash games if you're interested. All right, let's now talk about Bosk a little bit more. In this game, players are going to go through four seasons in a year. In the spring season, they will be planting their trees out onto a square grid, and then in the summer, they're going to score the different trails that those trees are on. Then in the autumn, the players will have the leaves fall off of the trees in differing wind directions, and finally in the winter, we're going to score up who has the most leaves in the various areas. Now, I'm going to explain how all of these details work in more more detail while we're playing, but before we jump in, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, you please click the like button for it down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Also, if you would like to directly support this channel and the creation of future videos just like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. There you'll find a bunch of ways you can help the channel out, and some of them have uh, pretty cool perks like voting on some of the videos that I film each month, and again, this is one of those videos, and that's why this one's being made. Alright, let's now jump into the game. Out here, the game is fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Now, we're going to be playing from the perspective of the purple player right up here, and I think it's time to talk about the structure of this game. Now, we're going to play through one year, and that is split up into four seasons, and each season is different mechanically. In the spring season, we will all be planting our trees out onto the board, and then in the summer, we will score those trees. After that, we'll move into the autumn season, where the leaves are going to fall off the trees, and then finally we will go into the winter, where we will just score the leaves out on the board. Now, the mechanics of each of these are different, and we're going to start off with spring. Now, we are the starting player, as denoted by this hiker token right over here, so let's go ahead and plant our first tree. Well, let's start by focusing in on these trees, and you'll notice we have eight of them, and they have values on the top. We have two ones, two twos, two threes, and two fours, and the same goes for all of the players. So let's take our first turn, and we can plant any of our trees, and I figure we'll start with our two. Now we can take this out to the board and put it down onto any intersection of two lines. Now I do want to mention that there is this white line right around here, and that is used to restrict the board at lower player counts. If you are playing a four-player game, then you use the entire board, and this white line acts just like any others, but in a three-player game, this white line is effectively the border of the map, and you are not allowed to play on the edge. So in that case, this would be as far to the left as we could go. Now in this case, I think let's go ahead and put this tree right over here. Now that we have planted a tree, our turn is done, and I'll explain why we want to put a tree in a specific spot very soon, but for now we can go on to the next player. Now this is going to be the orange player, and they've decided to put their number three tree right over here, and after that the yellow player can go. After thinking about it, they're going to plant their value one tree over here, and now we get to go again. As you can see, we only have seven trees left, and we will each keep planting trees until all of them have been planted. Once that happens, we are going to go into the summer, and we will then score these trees. So let's go ahead and talk about how that scoring works now, so that we can play around it as we put these trees down. Well, let's focus in on the board, and what happens during summer is hikers are going to hike down the various trails out on the map. Now the trails are going to be the row and column lines that are out here, and the way this works is we are going to score every single one of these, and we are going to count up the value of all of the trees in that row or column, and then whoever has the highest value of trees in that row or column will get two points, and whoever has the second most will get one. So in that case, once this hiker gets right over here, they can look down this uh, row right here, and there is just a value 3 tree right here. If instead there was also a value 4 tree for the yellow player, then they would have the highest value, they would get 2 points, and the orange player would get 1. Now let's just say there were more trees out, because obviously there will be, and we also had a 3 over here. Now in this case, the uh, yellow player has a distinct majority with their 4 over the 3s that we have, so they are going to get 2 points, and then we are going to tie for 2nd place with the orange player, and we actually get nothing. Now, if instead it was something like this, where the yellow player had four and the orange player also had four with this three plus one, then they would tie and they would each get one point. And if we happened to be over here with a three, we would effectively be in second place, but we would get no points for it. Once a trail is scored, we can log those points by pushing our leaves up here on the score track. After that, the hiker will move on to the next trail that will get scored, and obviously the map will be a lot more full once we get to summer. 
Now, if the hiker gets to a trail that only has trees of one player, then they will not only get the points for first place, but they'll also get the points for second place. So that means right now the yellow player would get two plus one or three points, even though they have this lowly one value tree on this line. After that, the hiker will continue moving along, scoring these rows, and then finally when it gets to the top, it will go over here and start scoring all of the columns. Once it gets over here and every row and every column has been scored, we can then move on to the next season, which will be autumn, but we'll talk about how that one works in just a few turns. So let's focus back out and we can now take our second turn, and I figure let's use our value 3 tree, and we can put that right over here. This means we have a somewhat strong three value for this row right here, and this three is higher than the one of the yellow player, so we are now competing with them for this column, and if they want to try and take that back, they'll have to invest another tree into this column. So with that, we can now move over to the orange player. After looking over their options, they're going to take a value one tree and put it way over here in the top left. Now the yellow player can go again, and they've decided they're going to put a two value tree right over here. Now that is currently an empty column and an empty row, but as we start to put more trees out, there's going to be less and less of those. Play has come back to us, and I think let's use a one value tree, and we can do a similar thing to what the orange player did. We'll just put this way down here into a currently empty uh, row and column. I'm sure they won't stay empty for long, but for now, I think this is a pretty good posturing spot. So now the orange player can go next, and they've decided to put their one value tree right over here into what is currently also an empty column and row. Now the yellow player can go, and they've decided to place the first four value tree out of the game, and they're going to put it right over here into an empty column and row. So now we get to go again, and currently there is one empty column, and all of the rows have at least one tree in them. That means no matter what we do, we will be either conflicting with an opponent or we will be strengthening one of our spots. And I think at this point, it's time to talk about what we are mechanically going to be doing in autumn. Now, remember, once all of the trees are out, we are going to score the rows and columns for summer. And then in autumn, we will start to have the leaves fall off of these trees. So let's go ahead and see how that works in a little more detail. Well, the first thing that happens is the starting player token is going to go to the player who has the least number of points after the summer scoring. Then that player gets to decide which side of the board this wind board will go onto. So we could go up here on the top, on the right, the left, or even the bottom part of the board. And let's just say we were the starting player and we decided to put it right up here. Now, this is not going to move for the rest of the game, and now we could take our first turn of Autumn. Now, the way turns work in Autumn is a player is going to grab this stack of leaf tiles, and they have eight of them. Now, they're going to choose one of them and then do their action, so that means just like in Spring, where you have eight turns putting down eight trees, in the Autumn, you're going to spend eight turns using these eight leaf tiles. Now, as you can see, they have numbers on them, and they range from two up to eight, and then there is also a squirrel right over here, which counts as a one. Now, I'll explain that in a little more detail in a second, but let's just say for this example turn that we decided to use our three. Now, this means we would put this face up right over here, and then we would take three leaves from our supply. This means we have three active leaves, and now we can look up to the wind board. As you can see, there is this little arrow token, and it's currently over the one spot, and the arrow is pointing up. Now, what this means is we have to select one of our one value trees. Obviously, we have two of them, and in the autumn, all of the trees will be on the board. So for this example, let's just say our other one was right over here, and that means we could choose this one or this one. Now, after we select a tree, we then get to put leaves down in the direction of the wind. Currently, the wind direction is pointing up because of that arrow right over there, and let's just say we chose this tree over here. Now what this means is we have to take one of our leaves and it's going to fall off of our tree in the direction of the wind and there are two different locations where that could go. That could be right here or right here and let's just say we went over there. After that, we can keep blowing the leaves off, and we are going to go from the previous leaf. Now, from here in this direction, there are three total options, because the wind could be going this way, or slightly over to the right, or slightly over to the left. So in this case, we might take this leaf and put that right over here, and then this one, maybe we could put right over there. After we place all of our active leaves, then we can remove the tree from the board, so that means as we go through autumn, there will be less and less tree options out on the board. Now, it is worth noting that you can place your leaves on top of your opponents, but there is a cost to do that. Now, let's just say that we were currently working our way right along here, and we wanted to put our leaf on top of this yellow one over here. 
Now, in order to do that, we would have to discard a single leaf from our active leaf supply because we are currently covering up one leaf. So that means we could discard this, and that's one less leaf we put out onto the board, but we now control this spot, and the yellow player effectively isn't there. Now, let's say instead of doing that, we wanted to put a leaf on top of this stack right here where both of our opponents are. In this case, we actually have to discard two leaves because you have to lose leaves from your hand equal to the number that you are stacking on top of. Now, let's reverse this one more time and say that we already had a leaf of ours out here. Now, you are allowed to move on and stack up on your own leaves, and fortunately, there is no penalty for that. After the starting player takes their turn, we then go clockwise, so the orange player might do this, and then the yellow player might do that. Now, once everybody has taken a turn, we will then look to see who played the lowest value leaf. Now, this squirrel leaf counts as a one, so in this case, that would be the yellow player, and then the starting player token would go over to the player who played the lowest value leaf, and then they would start off the next round of the game. Now, speaking of the rounds, what we then do is we take this token right here, and we move it over to the right. You can see the next arrow points over to the right, so that means the wind direction for the leaves falling down is going to go that way, and in this next turn, you have to pick a value 2 tree. Let's take a look at the rest of this board up here, because you'll see in the third round, you can select a value 3 tree, and the direction will point down, and in the fourth round, you'll select one of your fours. After that, the wind direction is once again going to go up, but we now have these asterisks, and what that means is you can choose any one of your remaining trees. Obviously, you will have used a 1, a 2, a 3, and a 4 already, so you will have one of each of those left, but you can pick them in any order that you want, although the wind direction is still going to be defined by the initial placement of where this wind board goes. At this point, let's come back to the squirrel action. Now you have one of these in your stack, and when you play it, you then get to put your squirrel token out onto the board. Now this is going to effectively jump out of the selected tree for the round. For instance, we could choose this tree right here, and it will then go in the current wind direction. So let's say the wind was currently pointing up. Now the way this works is you could land this into any spot within three leaf placement spaces. So that means it could go here, there, or there. It could also go there, there, or there, or any of these spots in between. Now, the key thing about the squirrel is whenever it lands on top of your opponent's leaves, you do not pay a penalty, and there is no way for your squirrel to be kicked out. So that means by putting this right here, we now control the spot, and there's nothing our opponents can do about this for the rest of the game. After you place the squirrel, you obviously remove the tree that it came from, and that is how the squirrel action works. Once this marker has reached the far right spot, and everyone has taken all eight of their autumn actions, we will then go into the final season of the game, which is winter. Now, much like summer scored the actions of spring, the winter is going to score the actions of autumn. Now, once we get to winter, there will be no trees on the board, but I'm going to leave these out here for now because we are playing the game. And what we will then do is score each one of these colored regions out on the board. Now, for this, you simply count up the number of the squares that each person controls, and you control it if you have a leaf on top of the stack or if you have a squirrel on top of that stack. Now, if you have the most leaves in that specific area, you will then score five points, and if you have the second most, you will score three. If you are the only person in that area, you will score both of those, so you would get eight. And if there is a tie for the first player, then each person will get four points, and any uh, third person coming along in second place will get nothing. Now, if there is a uh, tie for second place, but not for first, then in that case, each player who is in second place will get one point, with the first place player still getting five. Once all eight of the regions have been scored, the winter season will come to an end, and the game will be over. At that point, you simply check to see who has the most points, and that person will be the winner. Now, with all of this in mind, you should have a much better idea of why we're putting these trees out onto the board in the spring. Obviously, we are trying to vie to win the rows and columns, but we also want to make sure that we have a decent spread of our tree values so that we can best capitalize on the uh, leaves as they fall in the different directions. So I believe I've now taught you most of the rules to the game, and this means the tutorial is coming to a close. If you'd like to watch the rest of this playthrough as I finish out the spring and then score and then do autumn and winter, then you can do so by clicking the link down below in the description or that I up in the top corner, and I hope you've enjoyed learning how to play Bosk. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you can do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.